Hey, you guys thought I'd catch, uh, catch you up as to where I am on this 2003 uh, Gilroy Indian Chief uh, build from the frame up. And uh, so we're looking at the rear wheel. Some of the progress I made was to get these, uh, these new rims that I had. Uh, the hubs chromed, the spokes chromed, and as you can see, the belt pulley chromed. Uh, also, I had the, the rims themselves powder coated, uh, what I like to call that really nice deep World War II green. So that's a bit of progress I made having that rear wheel installed. Um, also, I got the inner primary on, which I also had powder coated to that same World War II dark deep green. Um, I've never seen another uh, Gilroy or a Chief for that matter, a fact that has this uh, a green primary like that. The outer half of the primary is also this deep green, which may look a little bit lighter than it actually is in this video as I look at it. Um, and it'll have the chrome inspection and derby covers with the Indian Chief heads on them. So that also means that I have the engine actually bolted permanently in place. Um, also the engine mount up here, which is one of Joe Malfa's products, this very thick billet aluminum uh, engine mount, which I take and have them chromed. You can see how beautiful that engine mount is compared to the one that came out of the Gilroy factory, which by the way, many of them crack from vibration um, after a while. So having that engine mounted permanently, the inner primary installed. Here you can see I've also installed the clutch cable, which is a good thing. Just more progress with that. Um, you can see the pressure relief valves on the heads here. So let me swing around to the other side where there's some interesting stuff going on, uh, which may look a little strange from the beginning. Anyway, there's the... There's the disc. There's the rear disc, which is a polished disc. There's a good look at the Brembo brake caliper. Um, I'm going to go back over around this way a little bit and just show you the belt. So um, the belt should track as I turn the wheel, which would be the way of travel for uh, the motorcycle. No, look at that. I'm going the wrong way. Apologize, guys. You can laugh at me. Okay, so now the wheel is actually going the way that it would turn. And as you can see, the belt is, you can see, you can see the teeth or the grooves on either side of the belt. So that belt is tracking in a pretty good location. Um, however, I will fine tune that again. If you look forward a little bit, you can see that the area of clearance between the edge of the belt and the white wall tire uh, as I look at it, it's about 5 sixteenths, so that's good. So I may mess around trying to adjust that a little bit more as we get closer to putting it on the road. Um, what I wanted to spend a little time talking to you guys about is the other, the other accomplishment I've made is I have installed the rear brake and a new brake line. And so you'll see what I've done here to bleed, actually bleed the rear master cylinder, excuse me, to bleed, yeah, the rear master cylinder, which is mounted to the forward control, which we can see right, right there behind the pedal, right here is the master cylinder. So anybody that's ever tried to bleed this rear Brembo and the master cylinder on a Gilroy era chief will know how frustrating, frustrating that it can be. In fact, I'm guessing that around 90% of the Gilroy Chief Riders or Gilroy Motorcycle Riders have brakes that are way too soft and spongy. I know I did until I figured this trick out, which I wanted to share with you guys. So this is an aviation style brake bleeder. It's available on eBay. They are not expensive. And that's just how it's listed. It's listed as an aviation style uh, brake bleeder. And so it's DOT number five that I'm installing. It's actually a Napa. It's a Napa container that I got it out of. Um, I do my business with a local Napa here. 
and I have put a hose on it. And what's neat about this is it's a reverse way of installing the master brake fluid. So in other words, the brake fluid itself. So the brake fluid gets pumped in here where my finger is, which is sort of backwards. Um, a conventional way to do it may be to put the, um, the dot five brake fluid in through the master cylinder on the other end of the motorcycle. But using this aviation style brake bleeder, you pump it up here, you hold it onto the bleeder here, crack the bleeder just a little bit, and by me elevating the master cylinder, the rear master cylinder is elevated on this little, this little sort of a wooden stanchion that I made. I'm hoping you can see that, you guys. And you may, you may have a reaction that, boy, that's a real Rube Goldberg trick. But I got to tell you guys something. It worked perfectly. So I removed the front forward control, which contains the rear brake master cylinder, which again is here. Here is my brake pedal. These are the brake pedals that, uh, that I do have, you guys, with the Indian Chief head on it. So the problem is when the master cylinder is usually down in its normal location, which I'm going to show you, which is right down here at the front of the bike, it means that the master cylinder is lower than the rear caliper. So you never can get the air bubbles out, you guys. Think of your front brake. Your front brake has the master cylinder up at the handlebars, up here, right? So when you put the oil in with the aviation style brake bleeder, you put it in from down below, sort of reverse. You pump it in, the oil comes in, and then the air goes to the highest point of the caliper and the air escapes and it's very easy to bleed it. But by nature of the beast, the rear master cylinder is always lower because it's bolted to the front forward control. So what I did because I'm building the bike, of course this is a brand new forward control, all freshly chromed, brand new floorboards, um, the accessory O3 brake pedal, which I refer to as jewelry. It looks like Indian jewelry on our O3 Chiefs. Um, the Indian Chief brake pedal that we have, I, I remove that from the frame, which once again is down below here, and I raised it up on this wooden stand. Then I tie wrapped it. Let me actually come around here and show you that it's tie wrapped. That way there by yourself with one hand you can pump in the fluid from the aviation style container, forces it into the bleeder, forces it through the hose all the way down, then it forces it up to the master cylinder where the air bubbles escape and come out. And as long as you time, what you want to do is you want to put a container underneath here so that you want to put too much oil in this to make sure you force the air out. Let the oil run down into a container down below. And after you feel you've got all the air out, which is you overfill it. And then what I do is I let it spill out for maybe one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Then I quickly lock the bleeder off on this end. And you guys, I was so pleased with the result. This brake is tight, baby. I mean, it's got no sponginess to it all at all. It has very little travel before it tightens up. So that's sort of my trick of the day with bleeding the rear caliper and the rear master cylinder, which is mounted to your foot brake. And again, you guys, the trick is to unbolt it from the frame, raise it up onto a wooden stanchion, or have your buddy hold it. However, that's not going to be very neat. Do something permanent like I've done. Um, you know, it's a piece of scrap wood. It took two screws and about three and a half minutes to fabricate it. And now I have it for all the master cylinders that I would want to bleed for the rear brakes. So that's about it for today, you guys. Um, you can, let me give you a quick shot of the Joe Malfa 
um, engine mount, which again is right in here. You can see how thick and heavy duty it is. It's, it's, it's easily uh, 3 eighths thick. It's twice the thickness of the stock Gilroy one. Very attractive looking too. Um, anyway, you guys, that's about where I'm at. Uh, the other thing I did was to fill the transmission. So the transmission has its first bath of oil. It is a brand new five speed Gilroy transmission that's in there. As you can see, I've got the Legend Lives cover on there, which really, really looks sharp, you guys. I've got the temperature gauge on there, and uh, I'll be sure in one of the videos to give my formula for how much Lucas 